Hi, here is my Seberg Olympian model SPS 160 from the early 1970s. I've been meaning to do a video on this because I wanted to demonstrate how it works. I also wanted to open it up and uh, show you the insides. Um, this particular unit was purchased from an arcade uh, store in Lyle, Illinois. Um, they've been closed for a number of years now and rumor has it based on what the man told me there is that this was in a Pizza Hut um, perhaps at the Ogden Mall in Naperville Illinois so regardless um, this is a very old machine and it's about as stock and as original as you're gonna get meaning that there have been no modifications or anything um, we'll take a look inside in a little bit but anyways this has the purple or the magenta inserts. That's why it has that pinkish purplish color. This also came in a couple other colors, in a blue, um, also in an orange. Right here you'll see the prices in the 1970s on how much it cost to make a selection. So a dollar got you ten songs. You have a keypad here which is for entering your selections and it's very similar to like an old touch tone phone. You got your coin acceptor, and then this right here, this emblem comes off, and there's actually a bill accept, acceptor module that you can put in there. What I've done is I downloaded templates off of uh, the internet, and I made my own cards for all of these. So I put a whole bunch of songs in here. Most of these 45s are the ones that are from my personal collection. So you'll find all sorts of stuff in here from the 80s. Um, there's Huey Lewis in the News. Um, there's Cindy Lauper. You get the idea. I even have a couple oldies in here, um, such as Beatles, Twist and Shout. Now, most jukebox records had two popular songs um, per record. So each side had basically a hit because these are regular 45s, the second uh, second side of most of these are going to be less popular songs. So um, here's Madonna, Like a Prayer was the main song, and then Act of Contrition, which is less known as the second one. Um, same thing with that with Men at Work. This is the 45 you would have bought in the store, uh, which had Down Under, and then Crazy was on the other side. Um, if you had, again, jukebox records which specifically came out back in the day they'd have two songs by each artist so then that way you'd have maximum play because some of the b-sides people probably wouldn't want to listen to as much this unit is on free play right now so all I have to do is uh, put in a selection and we're gonna put in Pac-Man Fever so I'm gonna hit in two three five and now it's manually seeking and sure enough, it's come up. There are two horn speakers. One is on the right. And then the other one is on the left. And then you have two woofers, which are probably about 10 inches each. So this song is now playing. I'm going to go ahead and fade out, and we're going to open this up and take a look and see what it looks like inside. On either side of the console, there are key slots, and you unlock both sides, which I did. Pull this forward, and it opens up. This is the inside, and what you're looking at right here, and it's probably going to the white balance may not come out right. What you're seeing here are all of the records. So each one of these goes in a different slot and they all have numbers. So based on whichever slot you put the record in, that's what number it's assigned within the system. You have some other technical mechanics here which allow you to do some testing to start and stop the mechanism. There's also a coin or a, a coin or a credit counter. This does advance 
Um, so I don't know if it's rolled over or if it's just stuck or it kind of goes in a circle. But anyways, that's kind of how you can tell how many plays it's had. But I can tell you it's inaccurate because it's on free play and it doesn't advance on free play. Um, but you got the inside part right here and we got some old ballasts. This is all original. But because it works, I haven't messed with it. I'm go ahead and close that right here. This is the record mechanism. Okay, and we'll show one playing in a little bit, but you'll see there's a lot of mechanics here. And a lot of um, like knife type switches. Um, solenoids, I believe there's a couple of them. But when those make contacts, things start to work. Here's the other side, and you'll see there's a pretty hefty motor down there. And that's the motor that runs everything. And I don't know if there's a governor on that or if it's just straight, but uh, it, it still works just fine. Um, you'll see there's a track down there, that teeth on those track, that track is how this device goes back and forth. And one of the parts of the computer that allows this to happen is called the Tormat. And I'm not able to zoom in on this, but it's called the Tormat and that's located at the bottom here. And as uh, the selector goes back and forth, um, it registers exactly where it is and that's how the, the unit will stop the mechanism and then play. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and open up the top. So there's a level le lever right here and you're going to see this opens up. These are all the electronics and as I said earlier, here's those horn tweeter speakers. Okay. Um, what we have here, this is actually, I believe, the digital control center unit. And this is actually the electronics that allow the unit to work um, uh, when you type in the numbers on the keypad. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And you're going to see a lot of old parts in here. Old circuit boards, old resistors. Um, I have recapped everything in here that I can. So these are all new capacitors. A lot of the capacitors that were in here had dried out. Um, you'll see some solenoids there. Um, you'll see a number of fuses. There's one of them right there. But anyways, that's the electronics for the digital control center. There's a shield panel here. And now what we see is the amplifier. And this has also been completely recapped. I bought a kit on eBay, so all those blue, blue parts have been re, uh, replaced. So that's the amplifier, and this is what's called the, I believe it's the SHP-3 amp. SHP-3. There's also an SHP-1. Maybe it's the SHP-1. I don't remember which one it is, to be honest with you. Um, but it's actually very powerful. I don't know how many watts, but for its time, it was pretty good. And these things are, are designed just to be left on and running. And we have some adjustments here in terms of bass, treble, there's like a scratch compensator and then an equalization. And on the back, you see some transformers as well as uh, some transistors. And a number of different jacks here. It's probably hard to see, but you can wire this into console type units. You can wire it into overhead speakers. You can even use regular house speakers on it. But there's different voltage points where you can connect things. Then in the back here, is the motorized volume control and that's a motor and the knob for the volume is on the back. So um, back in the day the bartender could have a volume switch so there's a wire connection that then allows the bartender to adjust the volume. You can also hook up a microphone because Seberg had like a PA type accessory so if you were in a bar or a restaurant and you wanted to use it as a PA it would mute the audio and play that so just some interesting fun facts but this is all original a lot of other little harnesses and boxes and things here's one right here this has to do with uh, the speakers okay and there's some jacks here where you could hook up some different ones stereo network conjunction unit then this is what's called the black box and Seberg had these digital boxes, and what's in here are very uh, prehistoric, if you will, microchips. Very old uh, processors, and what is in here is, is really the, the heart of the unit that communicates to this digital control center. And so they, they put these 
electronics in here to kind of conceal their identity and they also had a, a warranty on them because electronics were so digital electronics were so new for their time uh, they were prone to break but what's interesting is mine I, as far as I know it are all original um, and I've had no problems so they've definitely lasted 40 years but but that's called the Seaberg black box and this does come out I'm not going to take it out because it's powered on right now okay so that's the inside we're going to go ahead and I'm going to close this up and we're going to take a look at the mechanics and turn something on um, here's the back of the touch pad key panel as well as these are where you put bulbs this is the the bulbs where they get put in okay and then this is where that uh, dollar bill uh, vending slot tray thing could go in if you wanted to use that as an option okay so let's go ahead and uh, let's do another song here I'm trying to get something that's a little bit less popular because I think uh, this, this might get pulled down let's go ahead and let's just let's just go ahead and uh, do dead or alive you spin me around like a record so two two so it tells you right here which digits you've put in two now the record is spinning On the back of the unit is a reject switch, and that's what I just I just selected. Now it's scanning back and forth, and it's going to land at a default position when it's done. So this is just going back and forth. Sorry for the brightness there; that doesn't really come up too well, does it? But it's going to scan, and it's going to stop at around 276, 277. Let's go ahead and play a record that's a little bit later. So let's do uh, let's do some Gary Wright. Actually, let's do the Goonies. 172. Now it's going to start scanning. And the Tormat, which is the it's a magnetic unit that's I wasn't able to show it on video. It's now scanning. There you go. Now it's going to go to 172. And here's the record. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit the reset switch in the back here. to reject switch so that's going to actually reject the song that's in there and now this is going to go back to 176 let's go ahead and take the back off and take a look and what we have here is a latch that opens up and then this falls back actually it's a good thing the power cord was in the way because had it not been it would have fallen all the way back and here's the back mechanism now it's very bright okay Here's the coin changer mechanism for anybody who's messed around with um, coin changers for like an arcade game. It's very much the same. Um, I took this one out. I don't know how to get it out right now, but basically um, this is where the coins go in and it weighs it and then it goes into a coin box down below. Here's a closer look at the motor when it's playing. Um, some more inf more electronics. Let's go ahead and start up a record. And oh, how about some Billy Idol? That yellow thing is the needle.
that's the stylus right there. And it's double sided because depending on which side it plays, the record loads on a different spot and that tone arm hits the record on either side. Okay? So that's the back mechanism. Okay, so I decided to pull out the package with the orange panels just for fun. Um, this must be pretty, pretty old plastic because uh, it says here 1972 Seaberg, so it hasn't yellowed and it seems to be in good shape. But these are the orange inserts, okay? I didn't take the other side panels out, but looks like I bought these in, 19, uh, in 2005. Um, it's been so long I've forgotten about them, but I bought them, and maybe someday I will put them in, but for now we'll just keep them aside. So, I purchased this about, I'm going to say about 10 years ago. I have not done anything to it except for replace all capacitors, because capacitors do go bad from time to time. Um, I've also cleaned it up, I've cleaned it out. And I even purchased the orange panels that can go in here, but to put them in is a little bit of work. You have to take a whole bunch of screws out, and maybe someday I'll put them in, but for now I'm just going to leave them um, in the package. But this is about as, as new as you're going to get, okay? It does have some things that are beat up, but here's an example of how it has everything. It even has the Seaberg logo, logo which a lot of these get kicked off because it's just held on here probably by some clicks. So, hasn't been, been modified, still plays in 2014, not sure how long it will, but uh, I'm hoping I'll be able to keep it in the family for some time. Thanks for watching.